Hello everybody, this is Lula in Hawaii. It's Sunday here and it's a very nice day. There's a nice gentle breeze blowing. All is well and it's St. Patrick's Day. I thought I'd show you a few different things I've worked on. I've taught um, and also have many, many examples of my velvet flowers both on YouTube and on my blog. However, I thought I'd show you a couple right now. This is, let me take this off first. I've got a, one of those antique powder bowls and I don't have anything on the top of it. I took off, had some broken celluloid or something. So I'm going to recover that. But I'm going to show you how I made this flower. And this was the pattern I used if you want to um, draw something like that. It's about four inches across, just roughly drawn. It's basically a circle and then you cut little um, V's into the circle and then just shape the petals. And when that, that was the original size, but when it's finished, it shrinks down to this size. And what I did with this is I took two kinds of material. There's velvet and there's tulle and you cut for this rose you cut two of these of velvet and just any old velvet doesn't have to be particularly good velvet and this one was sort of almost like an upholstery velvet I think. You cut two of those so that's one and there's the second petals there and then in between these, before you finish, you insert two pieces of tulle, I, two pieces of tulle between the two velvet petals, and then two pieces of tulle on the very bottom. Then you stitch a stitch pattern, you know how you do just around in a, in a circle, about that big, about a centimeter, and cut a hole in it and insert some stamen or you can leave that till later because you've got to be very careful with these. If they're the kind that might fry when you use the heat gun, you probably want to add those later. Then you put this upside down, take it outside I do, and zap it with the heat gun. And it, what it does is it sort of ruffles the tulle and shapes the petals a little bit, not too much. And then you can insert your stamen or you can insert a bead or if you've done that previously, of course, it'll already be there. But if it's something that you think will melt, you probably want to do that later. So you insert it through a little hole you've made when you gathered it up. And I just covered the base of it with a little piece of velvet. So that's one. That's a rose. So that's a rose on there. And again, this is the pattern. And you cut two of these. Now you could use silk or any other fabric too. And then there's this one, this velvet flower. And this is a different way of making it. And I've got uh, the instructions on my blog, but um, it may not be easy to find. But if you look for velvet flowers, you might find it there. And it's kind of an old pattern I developed. And it turns out to be quite big if you make it like this. It's sort of a corsage. So it's a you gather up some petals, you cut a um, kind of a wavy line, and the amount of velvet is um, about 16 inches by an inch and a half wide. So it makes a rather large bloom. And then some silk ribbons get adhered to the base underneath, and two of my velvet leaves as well. Any kind of leaf. Could be artificial leaves. And that looks nice sitting on a jar like that, powder bowl. And the powder bowl, I just inserted a lace doily in it, just for fun, so that would be that. And then this is just another idea. I had a wee scrap of velvet, and it was an odd shape. And I do this often when I have little scraps of velvet, because some of the velvet is, this was velveteen. Some of it's kind of hard to get these days. So I saved them. And this was a little odd shaped piece, about two and a half inches, but not even square. It was a funny shape. And when I have a funny shape like that, I just run a gathering thread around the whole of the outside. Pull it up like you do a yo-yo, 
gather it to the middle. And the gathered side is the side I like to embellish with some beads. So I put three little beads in here. And as you see, it's not a perfect round. It's not like a perfect yo-yo, but it's kind of like, almost like a pansy or something. Just a good way to use up fine old silk velvet or pieces. And then this was the other piece I had left from making this. And it was a strip about a centimeter wide, and it was about oh, 10 centimeters long. And all I did there is cu I cut one side with the pinking shears here and gathered up the other side into a circle and put a pearl in the center. And that makes a little ruffled flower. I'm not sure what kind of flower that would be. They don't have to be real flowers. I love making flowers. I'm going to do some more and I'll show you sometime. Then I also have a couple of hearts that I finished. And it was just a different take on the hearts. They are appliqued with laces and some beadwork and a piece of um, portrait of a woman, I should say, on fabric. And a bow with a button. But the thing is, on the back I put a pocket. So you can put cards and tags and such, and greeting cards. And if it's a, to be hung somewhere in um, maybe the bedroom or somewhere, you can put a little lavender in there too. So that's one. Then the other one is this one. Again, a little woman printed onto some fabric and just a collage of laces and things. And then on the back is a pocket. This pocket's a different shape, but anyway, there's a pocket. As I said, you could put a gift card, lavender sachet, or it could be just fresh lavender, or flowers, or whatever you like in there. So those two that I finished the last few days. So I'll just bring that back again for you to see. That's the rose. And here's another corsage. This one's the corsage. Maybe I'll put that back here. That looks good there. And then these two little two little flowers like that. Just fun. Just very quick to make. These took the velvet took me about thirty five minutes, I suppose. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.